Hi, I'm Carla, and I have with me today Luna Russell, and she's going to teach us how to make these adorable little um, animals that go back and forth, and um, they're they're just absolutely adorable. Um, you can make them complicated, right? Yeah, these ones are a little more complicated. This is one I made a while ago. It's a bit more simple, but like still has a lot of character, so you can do any variety that you want. And I noticed there's fancy paper. So what are the supplies we need today? Uh, well, you can use, I prefer to use markers, but you could use pencils. Then paper, I use typing paper because it's easy to fold. It's thinner. And some colored paper. This is totally optional, but fun. And glue for attaching the colored paper. The note cards make it a bit easier when we get to coloring. And scissors. These bigger scissors I prefer to use for the less detailed parts and the small scissors are fun for the little things like teeth and horns. Okay, we're going to start. I'm going to use a little bit bigger piece of paper um, because I think the, the folds can be really, um, you have to be kind of precise and so I think this will work better for some of the younger kids is to have bigger paper but the, you're going to demonstrate I'm going to work alongside with her and make mine at the same time she's making hers. So what do I do first? Should I make a new one or should I unfold this one and show the steps? I think you should make a new one. Okay. We're, what we're heading for is this little fold right now. So. so I have my rectangular typing paper and first I'm going to fold it like this so that it's going to make a square. That probably isn't a precise square, but you can trim off the excess later. And pencil line around the outside just to know where to cut. So if I wanted to, could I put my fold all the way to the edge? Yeah, it depends on how big you want to make it. Okay. And you probably don't have to do that at all because your paper is already square. Right. <laughs> okay, well I'm going to do it because um, you are and also because I know that we're going to use these scrap pieces of paper for some of the ears and things, right? Yeah. So the basic objective then is to start with a square, or get yourself a square piece of paper. Origami paper works well if you don't want to have to cut off the excess. But you are going to need some sort of scraps. So now a square, or pretty close to a square. So now you're folding the other direction? Yeah, which shows that there's some more little pieces that need to come off. Okay. Is it important that it's accurate then? Um, it should be pretty accurate. It's going to be a little rough if you don't get a exact square. Okay. But nobody needs to worry if it's a little off because no, that's totally fine. sometimes um, if the nose doesn't quite line up or whatever, it makes it really cute in a different kind of way. So, like this one has a funky spot down here. I just made that into fur and let this foot stick out at a different angle. Okay. So the next step is the folding. Okay. Yep. This um, convenient X. So, I'm gonna fold the corners into the center of the X. Just okay. do the same on every edge. So thinner paper works better for this, right? Because it's easier to fold. Yeah. I'm using a piece of um, handmade paper that's pretty, pretty thin. But it's easy to fold, too. OK. So it looks almost like an envelope. Yeah. OK. OK. And when you're done with that, you can flip it over. And we're going to be doing essentially the same thing, just bringing all the corners to the middle. And it's okay if this doesn't line up all the way to that edge perfectly. Usually animals um, in the wild have some kind of 
something wrong either <laughs> they've gotten into a fight and they limp now or you know they have a patch of fur that doesn't quite line up so so when you're done with that um, you want to find the lines that line up bet like the best like this line all the way across I wouldn't necessarily use this one because it's a little uneven okay and just fold this in half okay and then we don't have to do this part yet, but eventually it is going to be puffed up so that it'll look a little more like this and have So here's more one. Room Go in. ahead and open that one. Yeah. So this one will open like this. Okay, awesome. <laughs> okay. And then if you do want to pop it up, then it's going, you're going to want to flatten it this way for drawing so that it's easier. So now we're going to draw. We're going to, um, what, what happens, in order to get it to look like an animal like this, when it gets flattened down, we have to draw the parts, the pieces and parts in sort of different areas. So for example, the, um, the tips of the nose are these outer edges. And I'll have a picture on the website that shows kind of the map of how to draw this, but Luna's going to also show us right now. So the nose, you can just uh, pick the two top corners and do a little half circle. It helps to use this middle line kind of as a, a reference. And so these will now line up pretty well to make two halves of a nose when it goes together. Okay. And then eyes are going to go on these cross pieces right here, the diagonal lines across this section. Now I notice like this one, it seems like the eyes are almost vertical. Does that? Yeah, that's because it's uh, folded differently. Okay. That, that one came around more like this. See, because this one, or oops, this one is going to have a funky eye unless I there. So so you do kind of want to make yeah. it um, a little bit, it's like, kind of like... Um, it's going to, it's, if, it's easy if you use the nose and what is going to be the ear, if you want ears that are like that, this is like kind of where the ear might end up. Okay, so I kind of want the, my eye to go over my line and maybe this is the bottom of the eye right here yeah. on the folded edge, so kind of like... Because this will be like the top of the mouth right here. Okay, so I'm going to do my own kind of eye. I like Luna's eyes a lot, but I'm going to I give just... this one a different eye too. That's two different ones. So these are kind of like, kind of like a Picasso dog, where everything is all. We're going to do Picasso dogs on t on Friday's lesson. Okay, so we have some eyes. Yeah, circles would work great too. <laughs> Pupil, it's not necessary, but okay. makes it look a little more like an eye. Oh. Okay. Okay. And then next, you don't really have to do anything to the bottom half if you just want to leave it simple. But if I were to do like a belly or make that a different color like on some dogs. I could just do a little circle on these edges. So for example, this this little guy has a little blue belly spot right there. Yeah. Okay. So two half circles. So I, I, I definitely want a little fur spot or whatever. A little oval, oval scribble spot. Okay. Okay, so then what? Then um, you can flip it over. Okay. Like, I'm going to use this one because it's a little clearer. So this one, you can see um, it has the brain right here and then the heart kind of across from each other. Right. I like to think of it as like each little hourglass shape is one section. Okay. So you can do that however you like. Does it matter where the eyes are? Like, do the eyes have to be on top? Okay, yes. Yeah, so, like, the eyes 
the eyes are going to be on, like, the top section is going to be where the eyes are. Okay. So there's a little brain right here. <laughs> what gave you the idea to put a brain on your... Um... Well, I started making them with just the mouths, and then I was like, well, it still opens the other way, so what is inside, like even farther, what would be inside mm -hmm. the other way? So <laughs> I just decided to have a brain and a heart. Okay. So a heart down here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the mouth can do, a tongue is going to be on either part right here. Okay, so it, so the reason we have to do it this way is be, just because of the way it opens and folds. Yeah. Right? Okay. So that will probably lean up, like, line up pretty well. So you kind of just have to draw it and then trust. What I, what I, I guess what, like right now this doesn't look like a mouth to me, but it's going to end up being a tongue, right? Yeah. <laughs> See, like this one, it has a similar idea, and then it will come together to look more like that. Okay, okay, I see. Okay. So this tongue is probably not going to line up, but I can fold it together. Oh yeah, this part needs to be longer. And if you don't get it right now, you could always kind of keep adjusting as you fold yeah. in and out, okay? That's why I like to use pencil. Okay. <laughs> and then for the throat, just do some like curved lines by a little like kind of by the tongue right on either side here so kind of like right here yeah like the start of the trachea kind of okay okay and then next usually i either go over in pen or do the parts that are going to get cut because sometimes I like to round out the body a little more so that it's less square. Okay. Which I do by making lines like this to show where I'm going to cut. Okay. So I'm going to let you do the rounded body one and I'm going to keep mine really square. Great. And then if depending on how you want the ears to be, like this one, I didn't add these ears. Like these are still attached to the main part. I just cut them out. Oh, cool. And these ears, I left the head and just put really big ears on top. So you glued on those ears? Yeah, these ears are glued behind like this. Okay, so, okay, that's cool. Well, I, I think I'll try the, um, I'm going to have you do one and I'll do the other. Great. Um, I'll, I'll do a glue on, so you do the one mm -hmm. where you keep it all at once. So for these ears, I'm going to sketch out kind of where I want them to be. And then just from here draw to the line so that it will, that extra paper will come out. Okay. So I'm going to Cut off this part real quick. For this, I like to use my smaller scissors, but it doesn't really matter. They can just be easier to fit in the smaller spaces. Okay. So I'm I'm a little confused. I'm not going to do it on this one, but if I wanted to, I would just round off the corners like yeah. that, right? Okay. So like for this one. It's a little smoother oh, right here. Right. Or, but on this one, yeah, I, on this one it smoothed that corner, but I left this one sharper for the, where I put the tail over. Okay, cool. And then since I'm doing the ears that are already attached instead of gluing on more, I'm going to cut out this little piece right here. And the other one cross right here.
left those little scraps. <laughs> So now, do we get to color? Yeah, sometimes I like to do a pen first to just make the lines a little clearer. Okay. Like around here, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Well, you do your pen first, and I'll do my colors first and end with pen. Mm -hmm. And um, are there any, is there a, tell me about the index card, how, um, how those help with the coloring. Uh, the index card is... So are you going to do pen or are you just going to start coloring? I'm going to start coloring. Great. So this helps if you want to keep the color off of the other sections. Cool. And um, it will keep it from getting like in the cracks and stuff. Okay, great. And that way you can go all the way to the edge without worrying about your other pieces. Okay. Well, I'm going to start coloring while you ink yours in and um, I'm going to look at some of yours as, to give me ideas because I'm... <laughs> And I like doing the, the marker last because sometimes um, I'm not sure that I even need marker or too much marker. Mm -hmm. um, okay. <laughs> That's a good tip with the um, to the index card. Is it working pretty well? Mm-hmm. Makes it so that it can be a little messier without worrying about it affecting other sections. Goes a bit quicker that way. So we're not going to do the full on like full on color treatment for these um, just for time's um, sake, but um, we're both going to do a little bit more. I'm adding fur and I'm hoping that will look good. So these are, um, mine are just water soluble markers or um, kids crayon. Crayola markers are great for this too. And Luna is using um, Copics, which are nice. They're alcohol-based, alcohol and um, what's nice about Copics is they, they layer really nicely. But any kind of markers will do, or colored pencils too. So should I do the fur? I should do the fur on the whole thing, right? If you want, okay. but it might make it more cohesive. So I've I've followed her map and I've made my eyes, and this is going to be a little um, part of its nose ish, or a, like a spot on its head, and then I've made. Um, little marks for like fur. So that's going to be my my coloring. And then now I'm going on to the back. And I like this one where you have two different colors. She she did this one with blue and that one with green. So I'm going to kind of copy this one. Yeah, don't worry if your first one doesn't work out. I've made so many of these and it's gotten a lot better. And remember, perfect isn't always best. Perfect is um, 
well, some people would say perfect can be kind of boring. So if it doesn't line up exactly right, that just means that your animal isn't boring. Okay. So how close are you to getting... We're, again, we're doing a quick color. You can take this as can little. Right you can take as little or as much time as you want on this part. And I'll finish coloring mine while Luna starts to tell us what to do. <laughs> um, oh, oh, for the next. For so, the next part, yeah. So now I'm going to get the scrap that I put aside because I was using typing paper, which is rectangular, and I was going for a square. And I can just use. Um, it's easier if I can cut. Like I'm going to do I think, arms right now. Can just get a little scrap, fold it in half, and then go against the folded seam and draw a little paw shape. Don't have claws. on the other side and I can just cut them in half. Oh that's a cool. Less cutting. But you can also do them individually if you want them to be different. Like maybe one of them could be like more of a paw, another one could be a bigger or smaller paw or different type of foot altogether. So what if I didn't want to do a paw? Would it still be okay? Totally. You can just like either round it out or leave it. You can do as many or as few little accessories as you want. Okay. Like this one has a lot going on. This one has less. It just has some feet and arms and some little horns, but none of it is necessary. Okay. For attaching these. Sometimes I use tape, but glue also works quite well. I'll just fold this part up. Put a little glue on that part right here. So that way I can fold it like this and like, come on. Yeah, I'm having a hard time getting my stuff in. So you're basically kind of like trying to get them to poof out. <laughs> oh yeah, that can be challenging. <laughs> Just like, kind of squeeze it, stick your fingers in the pockets. As so you can okay. are able to get them open. It gets a lot easier once you've done it a few times to <laughs> any of them. Because like this one is now going to stay a little more poofed out. Or I can pull it back up, but at least it's been poofed out before. So maybe if I... Here, it might help um, to squeeze this part a little and put your finger in. Okay, squeeze like the yeah. there. Okay. And then... Okay, awesome. That was okay. great. So here's my my guy. I'm going to grab another scrap. Hmm. I do like your um curved body. I think I'm gonna curve my body. Here's my uh, 
throat and uh, tongue <laughs> and my heart and brain. So I'm going to make some ears. Can I borrow the glue? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Glue stick will probably work too, right? Definitely. And tape works pretty well too if you don't have glue. And then for the arms, I like to tuck them kind of right under the mouth, just by putting a little glue on the front of the arm, like right here. Going to go on that side. There. And sometimes I like to fold the arms or the feet so that they stick out a little bit more and gives some dimension to the whole thing. Okay. So mine's kind of like just the head almost, like not the body, right? Mm -hmm. In some ways, if I didn't want to put arms and legs on it. Yeah, it can be that yeah. way. But it's like a little beard at the bottom. So besides adding the, so you added hands, feet, you cut out the ears. I just did two triangles and glued them on. Is there any other little embellishments that you wanted to point out? Um, on these, so on these ones, I added some, these ones both have horns. Uh, you could do wings, those are fun. Pretty much anything else you want. Oh, this one has a little tooth. <laughs> so just get creative and add on whatever you would like. And oh, this one has a tail. It just <laughs> comes around the side and got glued on there. So your assignment is to make a few of these. Uh, you could just do one, but don't worry if it doesn't make it like work out. You can always make a bunch of them, like whatever you have time for. So have fun, and I'll see you next time.